Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share some tips and tricks on how to successfully embroider on lightweight fabrics. Materials like chiffon, organza, and tulle can be rather difficult to sew with and they can be even more difficult to embroider with if you've never embroidered with them before. Over the last year, my costume choices have kind of forced me to embroider on these types of materials, so I thought I would sit down and share my experiences all in one video. Let's start with organza. I used organza as the base fabric for the embroidered flowers on my aerial ball gown. I made over 50 of these flowers to go all over the dress and it took me about five or six days to stitch all of them out. Organza is a woven material made out of either silk or polyester. For these flowers, I used polyester organza. Since organza is sheer, most types of stabilizer will show through the fabric. I decided to hoop two layers of organza with one layer of Floriani water soluble stabilizer in sandwiched in the middle. I also filled a bobbin with matching thread since the design is seen on both sides of the fabric. For this embroidery, I am also using a Floriani Chrome Sharp needle in the size 7511. This needle will help minimize the hole that gets punctured as the thread goes through the fabric, and therefore you'll have less likelihood of tears or rips or anything like that. Once the design is finished stitching out, I will trim the design and the stabilizer, and then I will soak that in water. Then I will allow the fabric to dry overnight typically, and then I will use a pressing cloth and my iron to press this, and that will kind of solidify all the stitches in place and really just make it look nice and crisp and clean. Finally, I rinse and repeat until all of the pieces are done. I do have a full video on the embellishment side of this as well. If you are interested in that, I will put it in the cards and link it below. But now let's move on to tool. I used tool for the cuffs or the little like frilly bits that come out of my sleeve on my 18th century linen shirt. And I also plan to use tool for my massive Sakizo project that I will get back to at some point. Um, but let's talk a little bit about embroidery on tool. So what's tricky about tool is that it kind of has a stretch to it, but it also can tear really easily. So between the stretching, warping things out of place, and the, the fact that it can just rip, we have to take a little bit more care on it and it does need a little bit more babysitting when you are embroidering on it. There's actually two stabilizers that I recommend for this. The water soluble, like I mentioned before, the Floriani water soluble is absolutely great. That's exactly what I used for the, the sleeves. But there's also another one from Embellish that has a sticky removable back that you will actually hoop and then you will take off the plastic or the waxy film and stick your design to it that way. That is also an alternative. I plan to attempt to do that on some smaller pieces that I want to make with tool. But the thing to think about when you use something like that where you're not hooping the fabric is you really do have to keep an eye on the machine because if for whatever the reason the fabric comes up at all, it can ripple or just cause issues in your embroidery. So it does need some babysitting. To combat the stretching of the tool, it's best practice to mark the grain line. So for example, you could do a basting stitch, you could put a pin in it, you could, tr I, a lot of tool is hard to draw on, so I wouldn't recommend that. But basically by marking the grain line and hooping and embroidering like in the direction of the grain line will help you not overstretch your fabric so that you have weird ripples when you're done. The last fabric that I want to talk about doing embroidery on is chiffon. I embroidered right onto my chiffon fabric for my Spirit Elsa cosplay, specifically her sleeves. Chiffon really likes to slip around, so I cut out just enough fabric to hoop that was also large enough to put my sleeve pattern onto, but also not so large that there's a ton of waste or a ton of fabric kind of hanging over the edge. 
This is gonna be different for every single project, so you'll have to use your own judgment on how much larger to cut something out. You can cut out the actual pattern piece, mark where you want the pattern, and then use the sticky um, stabilizer that I mentioned previously. That is an option, but because of how much chiffon shifts and, and slips, it might become a bit difficult. So like with tool, it's a best practice to mark your grain line. You could even hand baste around your pattern piece when you go to put it into your hoop so that you know exactly where your pattern piece is, but you're able to actually hoop the fabric. I used the same water soluble Floriani stabilizer as well as the 7511 sharp needle. The sharp again just helps it really get through the fabric and not leave massive holes in your fabric, which nobody wants. Since the embroidery design was white, I didn't actually have to fill a new bobbin for that. Um, but like if I were to do it in black or blue, I would want to fill a new bobbin for this. When I did the organza embroidery on uh, Into the Unknown Elsa, I think it was a dark blue embroidery uh, and I did it, I made bobbins for it because it just made sense. It's see-through, you're gonna see it. Something that I did different with Spirit Elsa was I added a material called Mylar to the top. Basically what that was, was when it stitched out, it had this iridescent look to it and the actual Mylar itself is tear away. So when the embroidery was done, I would tear it away and then I would have this really pretty icy iridescent looking snowflake on my sleeve. And that's basically how you do machine embroidery on lightweight fabrics. In two weeks, I'm gonna be releasing a video on making your own machine embroidered insertion lace. So if you would like to see that, make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments below if you want more embroidery videos or if you just want me to stick to straight up sewing videos. I really like talking about embroidery for cosplay, so I don't mind doing these videos every now and then just to break down the details for y'all. And a special shout out to everyone over on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your continued support. If you would like to support my content, I do have a Patreon. You can go follow me over at patreon.com slash Cosplay to get early access, ad reviewing of these videos, access to the Discord channel, access to a monthly pattern, access to voting and helping me make hard decisions on costumes. And with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Until the next time, happy sewing. <laughs> Why am I like this? Uh... two weeks, I'm going to be releasing blah, 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 blah. basically this is a video on babysitting. Does that make sense?